How's it going everybody? Pretty excited about today's video. I have a power saw here. It's a super rare saw. Um, not They didn't make them for a long period of time. And it's another saw that I didn't have in the Husqvarna lineup. Um, as time has gone on, I'm collecting more and more Husqvarnas so that I kind of have the lineage, you know, all the way, all the way from this saw or the L77. I still been playing with that L77. I am going to get it running. It's been, uh, it's been a failing effort, but this saw here is pretty rare. They didn't make them for very long. And actually it's quite, it's a compact light saw for what it is and the era. Let's dive right into this thing. This is a Husqvarna 480 CD. They only made these from 78 to 81. So not a super common saw. It, the date of assembly on these, it'll have an assembly date and it's in black. It doesn't say uh, what year because it's been rubbed off, but somewhere between 78 and 81. So this saw is older than I am. So today's video, and I want to show you guys one thing. The saw that came after this, where is it? Is a saw that we may consider to be modern. Uh, or a more, a more modern setup. Husqvarna 181 SE. This one is a, what's the tag say? This one is a 1985. So uh, not the not the oldest 181, but not the newest either. So it's kind of right in there. Now, as you guys can see, I think Husqvarna was really ahead of their game. Making sure you guys can see this. Oh yeah, you guys, you guys got what's going on. Notice the, this is what I consider the last of the old style saws with the big can on the front and uh, the handle's plastic, uh, the upper portion of the handle. But look at the size of this saw. It's very compact for what it is. Um, it's smaller than this 181. Weight wise, now this 181 is a wrap. I don't think there's any difference in weight. In fact, I think this thing's a little bit lighter. So, uh, kind of interesting. I've never run a 480 CD. You guys know I do pull this saw once in a while. This 181 runs amazing. Um, my buddy TK's been a good friend of the channel. TK, I hope you're doing well, buddy. He mailed me this saw and said, hey, this thing's been on the bench forever. And when I got it, it's a runner. And from what I could tell, this saw was completely rebuilt with OEM parts and then sat on a shelf. So um, pretty neat. It's minty minty. And for an 80cc saw this vintage, this thing really cuts. So I'm not sure what to expect with this. Just gonna put the 181 back on the shelf here. Okay, so. You get a new power saw. This is for the newcomers, welcome, and for people that have been buying saws forever. When you get a new power saw, the biggest thing is, what do you got, right? Well, I'm gonna show you guys. Let's see if this thing runs. Um, a buddy of mine found this saw for me, and uh, he's become a good friend of mine, and he's a, he's a saw guy, that man. He's uh, he's always thinking about saws, working on saws. He's just a good a good saw man. Anytime I buy a saw off him, I'm just looking for a scratch here. Anytime I buy a saw off this fella, it's always it's as good as it can be. It's gonna run good. It's gonna start now. This one, let's see if I can get this off here. There we go. This one is not from his collection. He found this in another in another area and asked me if I wanted it. I'm just going to pause you guys here, grab a scrunch and take this nut off. There we go. Got a half dozen scrunches. You think I could find one at that exact second? Now, apparently, and I don't know for sure, I haven't checked yet, this saw has Spark and compression. So those are the first two things that you want. You want spark and you want compression. 
okay? If you're missing one of those two things, you got a saw that's now a, a rebuild or a project. Chain brake band is missing. I will probably pull the chain brake right off of this thing. Old school three shoe clutch with the single with the single spring. Those are problematic, but that's what saws this age had. Now I wonder. Here, let's pull the spark plug off this thing. Okay, so first thing, does it have spark? I'm gonna pull this thing over. I'll probably just bring you guys right in. Does it have spark? Okay, I got the lights off here. Oh, yep. Spark is uh, very important in the equation. Make sure it's got a good ground. Oh, now it looks like it doesn't have spark. Oh, the uh, spark plug boot's kind of loose on this thing. There you go. Do we have compression? Well, usually what I do here, I'll put you guys back right there. So we know that this thing has spark, so that's a good thing. Screw this back in. Let's get some light going here. If you guys are making YouTube videos, lighting is, uh, I've learned that over the years. Lighting is uh, key. The more light, the better. Ooh. Oh yeah, this thing has tons of spark. Tilted carb under the hood. Uh, now I know just from the shape, this is an HS carb. How's the fuel line? Little stiff, but not horrible. Uh, no governor on this. Here's the choke. Just your typical Tillotson arrangement. Now, I don't know if this carb kit's going to be good, but... Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab tools. I always do this because I've been bit. You never know what's in an old muffler like this. I had a muffler full of um, some kind of fly. I bought a saw from down south. The whole muffler was full of these flies that were dead. And when I pulled the saw over, guess what happened? It sucked the flies into the motor and just made an absolute mess. Let's pull this muffler off. I took off the bottom bolt here, only for one reason. Um, it, it was the wrong bolt and I was having a really hard time getting a ratchet in there. So rather than, rather than fumbling. Okay, so two 10 mils. Coarse thread. Not sure what's going on there. Okay, pull up both these bolts. There's one. Hey, I wonder if that L77 pipe... Oh! Friends, do you think that L77 pipe will fit on here? Oh. We better try that before this video is over. If this thing runs. There you go. Boom. It's not terrible. Little There you go. little scuffy. She looks pretty good in there. No heavy carbon deposits. Hey guys, the inside of this pipe is broken. So, but look at this. <laughs> oh, now the bottom bracket doesn't go to anything, but see if these holes are the same. Oh, they are, aren't they? Okay, hold on. I got to mount this thing. Well, would you look at that? Exactly the same flange and bolt spacing. Interesting. Almost like these saws are from the same era. Because they are, really. And I mean, I would say the 480 CD is an upgrade from the L77. I don't even know the bore and stroke on this thing. I don't know if it's the same as the 181. Is it longer stroke? There we go. Ooh. That's fun. I want to hear this pipe. I'm not sure what it's going to sound like. I think it's going to have more than enough back pressure with all the turns. Now, typically, you would want a pipe to choke down, but this thing has so many bends in it. See, look, the bottom bracket's wrong, but I could actually make a bracket to go to there. That's actually awesome. <laughs> okay, back to the getting this thing running part of the video. I get carried away, don't I? Okay, so I have spark, I have compression. The exhaust port's clear of debris, because sometimes there'll be carbon in there, 
and it's old carbon. You fire the saw up, and guess where that carbon goes? Against the piston, and then you just cooked a saw that is still good. You know what I mean? So, um, take the time. I know you can get really excited with a new saw and want to run it. I've been guilty of it. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is there... Yep, there's a fuel line and filter in there. It's not detached. I'm just going to put a splash of fuel. Now, all I'm going to do with this thing, I'm going to give this thing a little splash in the carburetor. Only for one reason. A lot of times these old saws, especially these Tillotsons, there we go. These old Tillotsons, sometimes the the impulse off the intake block, I'm going to spoof my coffee, and a lot of times what happens with these old Tillotsons is they take a really long time to get primed sometimes. So you're you're just reefing on the saw and it's not going or it gets going and then it doesn't want to start. Okay, hearing protection, turn your speakers down because I have a feeling that this thing's going to be ridiculously loud. Okay. Switch is on. I'm going to move my chair out of the way. Okay. Full choke. I got fuel in the carburetor. Let's see if this thing starts. It should fire right away. There you go. Let's try it again. Oh. Well, it's running with choke. Give it a little more squirt of gas. Full choke. Okay, ready? This carb is probably going to need a kit. We'll get it going one more time to see what it's doing. Okay. Okay. Off camera, I'll put a kit in this real quick. And we'll get it going. Okay, I want to show you guys something. This would be a good candidate for the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. This orifice right here was completely, completely clogged. I still got some cleaning to do. The screen was clogged. You guys can see there's like a, a taffy like substance, varnish. On the metering side, the the needle was completely stuck. And I'll show you guys. Metering lever diaphragm, crunchy. You hear that? That's garbage. But funny, this side was fine. But the thing I knew, as soon as I pulled the fuel line off, we we're not getting any fuel to this carb, which tells me the carb's not pulling fuel. So anyhow, I'm gonna do some cleaning. Yeah, uh, if this doesn't work out, I will throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner, but I really want to get this saw running for you guys today. Okay, we got a clean carb, carb kit, fuel line seems good. Let's see what she does. I put a little bit of fuel down in there. Because again, these Tillotsons don't really like to prime. Interesting, this carb looks like it's on here crooked. Weird. I wonder if that's just how the intake is. Yeah, I guess it is. Weird. Okay, ready? Oh, did I flood it? Oh, she's loud. getting fuel now usually when you give a soft throttle and it takes throttle cleanly like this one was that tells me I'm getting fuel let's fire her back up see no do we need some choke ski okay I'm gonna give this thing a little more load yet. It's taking throttle. Who knows when this thing ran last? <laughs> it could be 20 years ago.
Oh, our muffler came loose. Ha <laughs> ha! You guys see that though? So this thing was just a little lean on the high jet. I'm sorry if I'm yelling, but uh, one of you guys sent me these really good Husqvarna hearing protection. So this thing was a little low on the high jet there, and what was happening when I when I or a little little lean on the low jet, and when I was giving it throttle, it was dying. Where's our high jet at? Half. One. Okay, so our high jet was way too rich. Let's see if this thing's. Okay, well, what do we got here? Some kind of something or other. This thing runs nice. Um, I picked this up as a dead saw. Wasn't supposed to be a runner, but it's a runner. Let's see, like look at the restart on this thing. Interesting. Okay, well, it's gonna bring you guys in close here. Wow, well, there, there's two birds with one stone. Let's put the air filter back on. This is a nice saw and it feels snappy. Um, I don't know, do any of you guys have one of these? Uh, this is my first experience with a 480 CD. This thing feels um, pretty legit. It doesn't feel like an antique saw. It, it, it wants to rev. And it's rich right now. Now, that bracket will probably bolt to the bottom of the handle. The fellow that sent this to me, uh, Pekka Honkinen, I believe his name was. Uh, this pipe, you know what? This pipe, I think it works. I f you can feel it. Just making sure we got no fuel leaks here. Oh, looks like we have a, oh, there's the hitch in our plan. We got a fuel tank leak. Or is the cap leaking? Okay, I think it's just the cap leaking, friends. I won't know, I'll have to sit this thing on a uh, piece of paper towel and see if it's leaking. I think the cap's actually leaking. Super common for old power saws. Um, Pekka, this thing, this pipe seems to work, I, and I'm not sure if you knew that, um, but it sounds right. One thing, friends, a pipe that works, I've noticed this, the saw wants to be really rich, not because it's tuned rich, this saw is not tuned rich, but you guys hear how rich it is? It's not tuned rich. What's happening, I think, you're getting a, a, a pulse wave, almost like an expansion pipe, but not quite. You're getting a pulse wave that's forcing some of that unburnt fuel and air that's coming out of the transfers into the pipe and it's coming back and it's getting pushed in there. This pipe works. Um, interesting. I can't wait to put this thing in the wood. When it warms up, I got a whole bunch of saws I want to run. And this is definitely going to be one of them. Interesting. So there you guys go. Old vintage power saw. I strike out sometimes. Um, sometimes you buy an old saw and it needs a bunch of work. Again, I've been messing around with that Dolmar. I got to put a timing light on it. A lot of times these old saws with this um, Bosch ignition, which I'm sure this thing has the same thing. Um, a lot of times they, they don't make spark and they can be expensive to replace. I'm not sure where the best place to get parts for them is at this point, but um, a lot of times they turn into a, a huge project. This thing's nice. I wonder how this thing would pour it up. I really like this saw just for a, a couple reasons. It's 80 cc's and it's small and it's fairly light. 
Um, a lot of the old saws, they're so heavy, you, you, a guy just doesn't want to run them, you know? You gotta be, you gotta be kind of in the right scenario, bucking wood or, or something like that. Um, you gotta be in the right scenario where, where you want to use a big vintage power saw. It's because they're heavy, right? And if you're doing a lot of living, you guys know me, I cut a lot of dead spruce trees. You know, they're not the tallest trees in the world, but some of those can be 60 feet. And uh, you're doing a lot of limbing. I tend to not want to swing around a saw like this all day. But this thing, it's just a nice power saw. And again, late 70s, early 80s vintage. Oh yeah, so this this fuel this fuel cap is leaking. Might have another one in here actually. I think I do. Interesting. Let's see. I got a lot of you know, old parts for these old uh, huskies. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, look at that. Well then. Okay, well we'll throw this in there for now. But a lot of these old saws are still super strong and will, they'll put wood on your truck. I didn't pay a ton of money for this. And like I said, my buddy found it for me and I, I saw it and I was like, ooh, what's that? And uh, he said, I think, he, I can't remember. I think he said it was a 480 or 485, I think, 385. Anyways, it didn't matter. I was like, oh yeah, I'd like to have that on the channel. So uh, thank you to my buddy out there. He likes to stay anonymous, which I appreciate. That's cool. Um, this is a runner. This saw runs, starts, idles. Let's see how it restarts now. The kill switch even works. thing with this pipe is it's just barely touching the top cover but that's okay I actually think this is the wrong top cover for this saw now again a pipe that works I'm finding is the complete opposite of a muffler mod I find a good muffler mod the saw needs more fuel a good pipe like this this thing's cool um it yeah it hangs out far on that but it's just neat somebody built it for me and I'm definitely gonna run it a good pipe which this seems to be um, will cause your saw to go rich on the high jet. And the reason why, I believe, is it's forcing fuel and air back in. So you're getting a richer mixture with every stroke. Um, that's the only thing I could think of because, like I said, oh yeah, wow, is this thing a leaker? I'm going to have to figure this out, even with that cap on it. But like I said, a good pipe just seems to make these saws rich. All saws that I put a good pipe on need need less high jet. So, um, and it's cold in here. If a saw's going to be lean, it's going to be lean today. Uh, so, anyhow, friends, there you go. Vintage Power Saw 480 CD Husqvarna, 1978 to 1981 with a go fast pipe. Oh, that's nice on the hand. Awesome. I just love power saws. I don't know about you guys, but every time I get an old saw, especially something like this running, I don't know, it feels good. It's like another saw saved from the junk pile. Um, guys will throw stuff like this away often, and it's like, uh, for me, this is still a useful saw, and I'll definitely run this thing this upcoming season, and you guys will see. This thing will put wood on my truck, I guarantee it. And uh, it seems to be a good runner, so... Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later. Ah, that thing's cool. Pekka, your pipe, buddy. Awesome.